Broadcast video live. Hello? Hey, people are so excited to continue working. So, like, I, I cannot move them and stop. <laughs> No Some worries. Tracking data sets, others. Sorry, I cannot hear you properly. There is a lot of background noise. One second. We'll keep going. Yes, you've been recorded. Yes, absolutely. Look, we, we, we want your attention, just. Laura, I'll show you. This is. <laughs> we'll show you. No, we cannot stay. This is Dominic Bjorn and Trace. <laughs> Nice to meet you. They're sweating, <laughs> cracking data sets and moving them to Sikan. Brilliant. There is something with audio here. Hold on, let's try. Can you talk now? Yep, I'm talking now. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Yeah. 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 That's, that's my microphone. Hold on, now. That's a great view of the ceiling. That's good. I probably have this horrible echo here from me, and they cannot find my microphone. It's a very dramatic echo. <laughs> I switched it off. Hey.
Yep, I can't hear you at the moment because you've muted, I think. But if you can hear me, then that's that's success. Hello? Hello? Hello, I can hear you now. Okay. So maybe we You're a little bit echoey, but... I think it's working. You'll have to talk and we'll mute ourselves. Okay. Well, that's fine. I'm quite happy to talk. And if, you know, I'm going on too long or whatever, you can just type in the chat. Um, so just let me know when you're ready to start and that's fine. I feel bad interrupting your hacking. You're obviously doing loads of good stuff. <laughs> yeah, you ready to go? Okay, cool. Well, do do shout if you want me to stop or do you have questions or anything like that. So I'm Laura James. I'm CEO of the Open Knowledge Foundation. Um, and we're all about opening information so people can understand problems and solve them. Um, imagine you're ill. You should be able to find out everything about the condition you have so that you can get the, make the right choices about your treatment. Imagine you're a parent. You want to make sure that you're making good decisions about your child's education. You need information to do that. I want to start off really with a, a story of open information answering a question that mattered, um, something the Open Knowledge Foundation was actually involved in, following the money in Ghana. And villagers in Ghana are entitled to 3% of the royalties on mining and other extractive projects in the area and that's supposed to help them build roads, schools and hospitals. And they were finding that the minerals were leaving but money wasn't coming back. Um, there were no benefits to the local communities coming out back at all. And villagers asked the government, where's the money gone? And the government said, well, the mining companies aren't paying. And the mining companies, they said, well, we're paying it to the government. The government's just not giving you the money. And in a day and a half at an event that the Open Knowledge Foundation was at, one coder, one journalist, one community activist got the answers. They pulled data from public databases, stock exchanges, and so on. They checked where the money had gone, and they were able to find that the money had been paid from the companies to the government, and that was where it had gone missing. And that was empowering local people to hold their government to account, to hold power to account, and answer questions that matter. And that's, that's the importance of open knowledge. We have the ability now in the 21st century with the internet to share information. It's really easy, but we still need to make a little bit more effort to make sure that information is truly used and useful. Now, open data can be freely used, reused, and redistributed by anyone, anywhere, for any purpose. And the key point here is you're not restricted to, to non-commercial use. You don't want to have to check with a lawyer to see if you're do it working with something open. So open data can be used wherever, whoever, whatever organization you're in. And that's vital for interoperability. You can seamlessly share and weave information. And the open definition guarantees that the data or the other information is interoperable. And it doesn't stop you selling services around it if you want as well. So why is open important? With open information, you can componentize things, break it down, mix them together in a different way, and then share it again. And that means you can get new insights, better quality data, and innovation. And if you've got closed information, access is difficult, licensing makes it hard to understand, you maybe can't get hold of the data and you're not sure if you can use it. To weave data together at large scale, to take advantage of all the data we have access to today, it's got to be open. And that gives you extra power as well. You can have transport data telling you when the buses are running, and you can have geo data telling you maps, but it's only when you've got both that you know when you have to be at your bus stop. So it's really great, you combine information, you get more out of it. And similarly, Software engineers say, to many eyes, all bugs are shallow. But to the Open Knowledge Foundation, to many eyes, all data problems will get spotted. Someone will find problems. Your data will get better if you publish it. And you get more innovation. The best thing that will be done by your data will be the thought of by someone else. So open knowledge is what open data becomes when it's made useful, accessible, understandable, meaningful, and able to help someone answer a question that matters or solve a real problem. And we have the open definition that sets out 
exactly what openness means, both the legal and technical aspects of openness, because you need both. You need to be able to legally use the data, and it's going to be possible technically to use it too. And at the Open Knowledge Foundation, we think about all kinds of knowledge, and any kind of knowledge can be open. It can be any format, spreadsheets, databases, pictures, or words. And it can be data from any field, transport, science, products, education, maps, legislation, libraries, culture, business, design, all kinds of things can be open. It's a really big tent. And lots of different people can work with open information. It can be published by anyone, from government, public sector bodies, researchers, businesses, universities, startups, charities, individuals. And it can be used by absolutely anyone as well. And all kinds of people can and do get involved with the open knowledge movement as campaigners, coders, writers, tweeters, trainers, data wranglers, ambassadors, analysts. There's loads of different ways to get involved. It's a really, I think one of the strengths of the Open Knowledge Foundation is the variety of different people. It makes it really inclusive and a fun place to, to be. So the Open Knowledge Foundation is an international nonprofit, and we use advocacy and technology to open up data and information and see it used to enable citizens and organizations to answer questions that matter, empowering them to create fair and sustainable societies. And we've been doing this since 2004. We're a real lead player in open data, um, advocating for open information in government, business, and civil society, and creating the technology you need to make open information useful. Um, we were involved in coining the very term open data and that the raw data now meme that was spread by Tim Berners-Lee and others came from the Open Knowledge Foundation. And we've played a really big role in the growing adoption of open data worldwide, including the 2013 G8 commitment to the Open Data Charter. And I should say it's great to see that Ireland is signing up um, at the Open Government Partnership Summit a couple of weeks ago to be part of the Open Data Charter as well, which is awesome. So we do a variety of different things. We build tools to make working with information easier. We help people learn the data skills they need, and we connect and support individuals and organizations and projects to create collaborations and to make things happen. We're makers, um, and I think you lot are makers as well um, out there at the moment. Um, we create the open infrastructure and tooling that powers and supports the open ecosystem. Um, just a few examples, CCAM is the most obvious one. Um, CCAM is the world leading open data um, publication management system. It's open source and it powers data.gov.uk, data.gov, the European Commission's Open Data Portal, and many more around the world. Hundreds of thousands of open data sets are published on CCAM. Um, but that's not all. We also have open spending, the world's largest open database of public money transactions, helping people understand where their money goes. And we've built tools on top of open spending as well. Things like the Where Does My Money Go project, which has the daily bread, which shows you how your taxes are spent. So you can enter your salary and it'll tell you what your daily amount you're spending on different things, education, hospitals, and so on. Um, and there's great visualizations you can make with spending data especially. Um, but we try not to get too carried away because it's not really always about the visualization. It's about the insight. That's what matters, the understanding of the data. We have Open Knowledge Foundation Labs, which is a worldwide community of developers and data wranglers and designers who are exploring the frontiers of open data, technology, and innovation. Um, and they build all kinds of things. I really like CCAN and open spending can seem very complicated and arcane. But we have some tools that are usable for anyone. Time Mapper, you can get it on timemapper.org. You don't have to have a PhD or be a data scientist. Time Mapper just takes a Google spreadsheet, that's just a simple spreadsheet, not even as fancy as a lot of Excel, and turns it into an interactive map and timeline. It's super easy, it's free, it's open source. Check it out, timemapper.org. I think it's really exciting. It shows you how anyone can get excited, you know, can use open data and create great things with it. So as well as technology, we also bring people together, um, partly because it's fun to collaborate and partly because data problems are hard and you're going to have best luck if you work with other people. So we organize meetups and workshops, both online and offline. And we've organized key convening events as well that have changed the shape of the open data landscape, such as the very first open government data camp in 2010. And it was amazing at the Open Government Partnership this year, the summit in 2013 in London, looking back just three years to the Open Government Data Camp. It's astonishing how far the movement has come. And we've, through this, through this network of bringing people together, we've made a lot of contributions to open data initiatives in lots of countries around the world. Our network has a formal presence in over 40 countries now, which is just amazing. And we have working groups covering all kinds of open knowledge. 
um, all every possible discipline almost, anything where there could be data that's open. We have some people who are working on opening that data, using it, building tools for it, establishing best practice and so on. And of course, it's worth mentioning the really big events as well. Um, in 2012, we had over a thousand people from 50 countries joining us for the Open Knowledge Festival in Helsinki. In 2013, only a few weeks ago, it seems to me, we had over 900 people from 55 countries coming to Geneva for the Open Knowledge Conference. Um, and if you haven't got the date in your diaries yet, I do recommend that you get the 15th to the 18th of July 2014 in your diaries, because that's going to be the Open Knowledge Festival 2014. And it will be the world's biggest open data event. We want over 2,000 people there from at least 60 countries. Um, and it will be an amazing opportunity to meet other people and build stuff, not just talk about stuff, build stuff as well. We've got a, an old brewery where we're going to be hosting it. And um, it'll be our 10th anniversary of the Open Knowledge Foundation as well. So it will be, uh, there will definitely be some parties happening alongside all of the, the hacking and other workshops and trainings and things that are happening. And the final strand of what we do is we help people learn. Data can be complicated, and so we help people learn through doing at datathons and hackathons, again, online and offline. And all our materials are open, and we deliver them in partnership with people around the world. So some of our materials, sort of the, the old ones are sometimes the best. The Open Data Handbook, um, which is the reference for legal, social, and technical aspects of open data, it's available in a ridiculously large number of, of languages. Um, and opendatedhandbook.org, you can go and get access to it in whatever language you want. And it's a really good reference, a good starting point if you're finding out about open data. But we are hands-on too. And School of Data is how we work to empower civil society organizations, journalists, citizens, and so on, with the skills they need to use data effectively in their own efforts to create better societies. And the mission of School of Data is to teach people how to gain powerful insights and compelling stories using data. And it's a really critical component of the open data ecosystem. Having tools and training to empower people to use open data is important whether it's someone who's new to open data or someone who's trying to learn more advanced skills to do deeper analysis. And it supports outreach and engagement as well. School of Data works by having a supportive community of learners and mentors around the world, working with Open Knowledge Foundation local groups and other partners. And it creates lots of opportunities for people to get together and use open data to create an impact. And we work mostly with data expeditions. I know this is probably going on at our School of Data, but data expeditions are great. They're little short gatherings where the group of people with very different backgrounds come together to tackle a data-related problem. We also do things like data clinics and mentoring as well. But data expeditions, they ask questions, they acquire data, you clean it, you analyze it, and finally you present it. And the focus is on the process. It's actually you know, collaborating together and learning from each other as much as it is on the outcome. And we've had data expeditions happening around the world now, bringing together storytellers, data analysts, engineers, designers, all kinds of people. So I really encourage you to, if you haven't had any School of Data workshops yet in Dublin, I encourage you to organize one, because it's a really great way of getting people involved. So there's a lot of things that we do at the foundation. Um, and I wanted to give you a couple of little examples of things where open knowledge can really make a difference. So, Opening up the Danish address register, the sort of postcode register, um, there was a fire at a house in Denmark, and the fire engine couldn't get there because their GPS didn't have the road with the house on it. And the road is in the government's database, but it wasn't integrated into the data on the stat now. By opening up that data, we've now got information so that fire engines in Denmark can actually reach all the houses that they need to reach. That's pretty important. It's only a small thing, but it makes a real difference to people. In Uganda, um, providing information about the performance of village health services, things like what days a nurse visits, what immunization services are available, has resulted in a reduction of a third in infant mortality. That's a third left in infants dying, and several of the really significant improvements in health outcomes. Just sharing that information is making a huge difference. And there's another example from Uganda as well. In 1995, they found that Ugandan schools were receiving only a quarter of the core grant allocated to them by the government. 75% was being lost somewhere to corruption. In 1997, the government started a newspaper campaign so that parents would get access to how much money their schools should be receiving. It was basically open information. Just because it's in a newspaper doesn't mean it's not open. And the result was that by 2001, schools were receiving more than 80% of the core grant. 
So that's going from 25% to 80% of the funds they needed to receive. Way more money than before that open information campaign. And that's open information really making a difference. So we're at the start now of an open data revolution. We've got these little examples and we're all working hard to get more data out there and to see it used and useful. But it's not some magic bullet. It's going to be a slow process. Changing governments, changing corporates to publish data and to use data is going to be slow. Institutional change always is. There's going to be new business models, building value from things other than data, showing organizations they don't have to sell the data, there's other ways they can create value. But that all takes time. We're going to need tools, we're going to need communities, and we're going to need skills. We need access to data, but we also need to get better at working with data. It's going to be disruptive, right? These things, change is never easy for everybody, but I think it's going to be a positive change overall. And it's important, not just for the small things, like being able to find out the best bus route to your job each day, but for the big things as well. Open data is going to help us solve the big global problems. We have big global problems, like climate change. On climate change, open data is going to help us monitor extreme weather, monitor energy consumption, usage, and carbon impact and track climate science itself. Open data helps us maximize productivity of agriculture so we can feed 9 billion people with one planet sustainably. We have big global problems, and the solutions to those problems require that we work at scale. They require that everyone can access and reuse open information. Open scale is what's going to be necessary. And open gives us that choice, the freedom, the transparency and trust that we need to tackle global problems as well. So. And open, of course, is sustainable. You get open source solutions, they're sustainable too in many different ways. So I think sort of I'm going to wrap up because three minutes isn't very long, and I'm sure you all want to get back to doing more useful things than listening to me. The Open Knowledge Foundation is a global network empowering people to answer the questions that matter. And I hope that all of you, you it sounds like you are involved today, and you'll continue to be involved through the local group, through working groups in areas that you're interested in, and at events and trainings and all sorts of things. We think the 21st century knowledge society should be an open knowledge society. Everyone should have access to the information they need. And I hope that you can be part of that and make it happen with us. Thank you. You're a wonderful audience. You were very quiet. <laughs> I can stick around if there's any questions, or I can let you get on back to hacking. I don't envy trying to type questions under pressure for the whole audience watching. It's always tough. Ooh, the most successful data exhibition. Um, it's, there's so many, it's really difficult. So I actually gave a little talk for, um, for Spain who were doing some data expeditions on energy um, a couple of weeks ago. And the same week, there was also an international labor forum um, data expedition hack day happening. Um, do you remember the Bangladesh garment factory disaster earlier this year, the Rana Plaza disaster? And following that, there was a school of data data expedition to look at garment factories and safety. Um, and that was so successful, they actually were able to, to correlate various safety regulations and, and, and health and safety situations. Um, that they then got together with the International Labour Forum to do another hack day looking again at garment factory safety to see where things could be improved. And just the fact that the couple, this is only a few weeks ago and we had that, and Spanish hack days looking at energy and other things at the same time, there's so much going on. Um, it's creating really big change with these things are small, but what we're getting at the moment is lots of different expeditions creating this little bits more insight. Um, I think. Yeah, and there's always good stuff. I'm sure that you're coming up with some good insights today. And the next thing to really look out for also will be Open Data Day as well, February 2014. There'll be so many data expeditions and data farms happening then. 
they'll be one to watch and hopefully we'll get some really good stories coming out of that too. I should say that one of the challenges is we have so many local groups doing so much stuff, actually keeping track of everything that's going on is really tough. Um, there's just so much, so many things happening around the network. Um, what would I like to see Ireland starting? Hmm. It's a good question. I think the main thing with School of Data Expeditions, it needs to be things that you care about. Um, so, you know, it's not some, you know, there are lots of different things and it's what the people who are involved in the exhibition are interested in. Um, you in the room there, you'll know what, what most interests you and that would perhaps give you some ideas. But also if there are groups you want to reach out to, um, we'd love to, one thing we'd love to do is more data expeditions, more school of data with teenagers and children. I think young people, you know, have great capacity for working with data and it would be fascinating to know in Dublin what your young people will be interested in what they would like to do a data expedition on um, because we'd really like to start engaging the next generation um, in working with data as well. That wasn't a very good answer but there are so many interesting things to tackle and it's, it is most interesting to work on things that you care about so pick things that you enjoy that's going to be best. Cool. Definitely. I think there's lots of different partnerships and we've worked with others in the past. I know in Berlin we've had events together with Young Rewild State. Um, we always like to collaborate at the Open Knowledge Foundation. We do our best work with other people. It's great. Great. Well, thank you very much, and I hope you have a great event, and um, I look forward to seeing the results. More open data in Ireland. It's excellent. Good luck with your open data portal as well. I'm looking forward to seeing that, adding it to the portfolio of CCANs around the world. Thanks very much, folks. Good night.